Very special. That was uh, the Temple of the Dog we were playing, um, I think, after or before Alice in Chains at the Moore Theater. Um, uh, Nancy was, of course, there. And um, it was a huge deal for me because it was my first. You know, this is so hard because it's, you know, Chris is in there and it's. He. Uh, it was a big deal for me, Temple, because it's, it, it was the first thing I ever played on. It was a legitimate record, and it was he was trusting me um, to play on those songs, and uh, and was real cool about it too. Like just like you know, just let yourself go, do it, man. Reach down solo, because I was very like I don't want to fuck this song up. I really was nervous about it, and he Chris was very accommodating and cool and mellow, and but just like sing like we all know, and but in, at any rate. After that, that night is special because we went out and had, he took me out for food across the street at the Italian restaurant, which is no one there. And kind of just like, hey man, welcome to all this thing. And you know, even though I was from Seattle, but just kind of, it was a, it was a cool night. And I'll never forget it. I remember we had a Chimay beer or some kind of ale and all sorts of stuff and talked about Pink Floyd. And I was just kind of asking what his influences were. And so that's, that's very special to me and very sad. And, and, and that I really miss him and I'm sad about that. And, and there's Ed with his light light shirt on. And, you know, it's, that was a that was a very exciting time. My dreams were kind of just starting to come and come true right there. Uh, just one thing about Chris: this photo really does capture the kind of generous and inviting way he treated so many people that came to Seattle after he already was there. Yeah. And and I've thought a lot about Chris. We've talked about it too. Um, I really think for the genius musician that he is. Uh, he was equally, if not more, of a genius at being a human. Yeah, I just love this guy. And he brought love to the people around him, and you captured a little bit of it in an early phase here. Agreed, and, and I, I feel like, so he did the same thing with Ed, when Ed first kind of came, I've told the story before, and what Cameron's saying is totally correct, and probably the same with the movie and your experience with him and that. Um, Ed was super shy. He'd been up in Seattle for about eight days or something. We do our first show, and then then he kind of moves back up, and and people were kind of dicks to him. You know, it was it was the Seattle dickishness that, that happened. <laughs> That's a thing, <laughs> and I've done it, and I only know what it is because I've been away from it and come back to it. And I, I love my people, but man, they were. It was kind of tough, and I was I was fucking pissed too because I was I was because it's Ed and, and he was a new guy and, and he sang great. And I was like, this is fucking great. Do you don't like this, you know, or or it's just like because he wasn't from Seattle. All of this kind of BS was happening. Chris was very inviting to Ed. We took him out hiking and drinking and just said, hey, relax. This is cool. Um, and I think he felt and a kinship. Obviously, he and Jeff and Stone were dear friends that they had just lost Andy, and this was something new for them that, that and he wanted to support. And that was cool about the Seattle scene, because not all the scenes were like that, so. Love you, Chris. Yeah, man. That was good. Okay, here we are.